last unit, or last learning target in unit three is solving an equation containing the radical expression algebraically. So on each problem here, you're going to make sure you, you have to check your answer. This is not checking your answer for your work. It's checking your answer for what's called an extraneous solution. Extraneous solution. It's a solution that is mathematically true, but when you solve it, you substitute it in, it doesn't actually work. So it's like a kind of easiest way to say it's like a fake solution. It's a false solution. So we always have to check every single one when it comes to the Actually, if you find one extraneous, that's not a real solution. It's not part of the solution. So the very first thing you have to do is always make sure, just like absolute values, make sure that that radical is isolated first. So this radical here is the square root. There's no numbers on the outside of outside of the radical to, and you have to move them first. So in this case, it's the opposite. The square root. Hopefully you're saying square. So we square both sides. These are the equations. You have what you do on one side, you have to do it on the other always. So square root and square opposites. We have 1 minus 63m equals 64. Subtract 1. Divide by negative 63. m is going to equal negative 1. If you check this quick, you always check it from the very beginning. So check it from this where it's the start. So we have the square root of 1 minus 63 times negative 1. And so substitute it in for m. And the right side is just equal to 8, so I'm not really worried about that right now. It's the left side. You just have to simplify it. So we have 1 minus 63 times negative 1. Is negative 63. Do that first. 1 minus negative 63 is 1 plus, uh, plus 63. So it's still going to equal, hopefully, it equals 8 in the end. 1 plus 63 is 64. And the square root of 64 is 8. Awesome. So therefore, m equals negative 1 is the solution. Uh, remember, always check for extraneous solutions. These are called, these are extraneous solutions. Um, solutions. So number two, we have r equals the square root of five, negative 5 plus 6r. Square root again is all by itself. Isolate on one side and equal sign. Square root opposite is square. We have r squared equals negative 5. So square root and square cancel. Plus 6r. Well, when you ever, whenever you get your biggest exponent is squared, Anytime you have a square, a variable squared, you need to, you're going to be thinking quadratic formula. If you're thinking, oh boy, quadratic formula, that again. Yeah, it doesn't go away. you So, what you have to do for this quadratic formula is you have to make sure all the terms are on one side. Quadratic formula is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Just means get all the terms on one side. So subtract 6r, subtract 6r, you get r squared minus 6r equals negative 5. At 5, you could have done this all at one step. r squared minus 6r plus 5 equals zero. So we have an equals zero, equals zero. That's what you want. Now we need to look at what the A, B, and C are. A is 1. B is negative 6. And C is a positive 5. In the quadratic, so this is the quadratic equation. Sorry, this, I think that's a formula. That's the quadratic equation. And in the formula, you have x equals the opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So are we just going to substitute all the numbers in? 
we have opposite B. B is negative 6, so that's going to be positive 6, plus or minus negative 6 squared minus 4 times A times C, all divided by 2 times A. When I simplify these, I always do them in the exact same order. I just do negative 6 squared first. 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. I'll never, I'll never do the 36 minus 20 in that step. 2 times 1 is 2. Now the next step is just one thing I do. Plus or minus 36 minus 20 is 16. Divided by 2. And then I just do one more step. X equals 6 plus or minus square root of 16 is 4, divided by 2. And when you get down to here, there's no more square roots, you can break it into two problems. You have 6. There's a reason why you have a plus and a minus. You have 6 plus 4, divided by 2. And you have 6 minus 4 from the subtraction here, divided by 2. So both of those. You have 10 divided by 2, 5. 6 minus 4, 2 divided by 2, 1. You need to check both of these. You don't have to show me the check, but if there's an extraneous solution, that's the only way you're going to know. So you have r equals, let me just write this down here, r equals square root negative 5 plus 6 out here. All right, we need to check both 5 and negative 1. So I put 5 in, let's do that first. Yeah, 5 on the left side, negative 5 plus 30, square 25, yep, that is 5, so that's good. So 5 is a good answer, now let's check 1. So we have, we substitute 1 in, 1 equals negative 5 plus 6 times 1, 1 equals negative 5 plus 6, equals the square root of 1, 1 equals 1. All right, that's good too. So both of them are good answers. And now uh, one last problem. So for this problem, that the square root is not isolated. There is a subtract 2 on the outside of that square root, so we need to move it first. And 2. You know, they go no. Two and R are not like terms, so I gotta put those next to each other. So now that that's okay, you just put it next to each other. But now the problem is we have a square root. When you square a square root, you're good. That cancels it, but on the right side, you have R plus two squared. So what R plus two squared means is that's R plus two squared means times itself. So that's R plus two times R plus two. Now we have to, now you're going to have to FOIL, double distribute, r times r, r squared, r times 2. So we gotta, we got to figure out a way to get r by itself. 2 times r is 2r. 2 times 2 is 4. And it equals 2r plus 3. Let's get all the like terms together. Unfortunately, we see we have a square again. So we know we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So let's move all the terms on one side. We have 4r plus 4 equals 2r plus 3. So I'm going to subtract 2r. I'm going to subtract 3 at the same time. I think you guys can handle that at this point. We have 1 plus 2r and r squared. So hopefully you're thinking a is 1, and b is, a is positive 2, and c is 1. So x equals. So let's do the quadratic formula, opposite of 2, plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. Negative 2 plus or minus, do the exact same thing as you did before. I'm only going to do the square and the multiplication about everything. And then I just do this simple subtraction inside equals zero, that's great. Square root of zero is zero. So when I break this up, so now I don't have a square root anymore. 
So to break it up, you have negative 2 plus 0 divided by 2. You have negative 2 minus 0 divided by 2. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, why didn't you do that? Well, negative 2 plus 0 is 0. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Actually, I don't only get to see if we get the same answer. So that's okay. So let's just check, make sure that's a good answer. Let's go back to the original problem. So we have r equals the square root of 2r plus 3. Let's substitute 1 in. Or negative 1. Negative 1 equals the square root of 2 times negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 equals the square root 2 minus 1 is negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Uh oh, negative 1 does not equal positive 1. Uh oh, so this means that this is a negative 1 is an extraneous solution. So when it's extraneous, and they're both that can be the same answer. There's this problem actually has no solution. So even though we found an answer, it's not really a true answer. So the only thing left is no solution. Okay, come to class with questions.